linguistics. I graduated from Florida State back in 1992. Uh, I graduated with a bachelor's degree in criminology. Uh, I moved on to the Marine Corps directly out of college. I was an infantry officer stationed in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. I spent uh, three of those six years in marketing and public affairs, and that's where I really developed an interest in business. And I was able to go to graduate school and get a master's in business as well as management. After the Marine Corps, I moved to work for Orkin Pest Control in Atlanta, Georgia, where I really learned the service industry and got familiar with how uh, businesses operate and some of the challenges of small business management and fleet management as well. I uh, had seen the potential impact that the GPS tracking was going to have on Orkin, which I was able to bring to Orkin when I was working there. And um, you know, based on the work that I did for Orkin, they purchased about $5 million worth of GPS tracking technology after about a 60-day study. So uh, they quickly recognized the value of the data that the technology was going to provide, and I realized that kind of potential means that there's some opportunities for business. When when I started GPS Fleet Solutions, uh, the industry was new. It was like, uh, think if you think about the cell phone industry, when it first started, you had bag phones, and people kind of understood the concept of mobile, mobile phones. Uh, people kind of understood the concept of GPS tracking, but most of them really weren't very well educated. So uh, when I was selling, I would spend an enormous amount of time just going through the educational process. Uh, I would say 45 minutes out of an hour, I would be educating somebody on the benefits. Whereas today, people are a lot more familiar with the technology. Almost every service company, anybody that has a fleet has heard of GPS tracking, is somewhat familiar with it. They just don't know how it applies to their specific business. So uh, when we look at things today, it's less education. It's more about driving the ROI understanding than, uh, hey, this is something that you ought to think about. It's a good technology. It's going to give good, good information. Uh, you know, today it's there's a lot more competition in the industry, and you know we're always looking for additional ways that we can increase the ROI for our customers through value-added services, but also you know using 12 years of experience to uh, you know to, uh, to convey ex you know, uh, stories and examples of people that have gone before them to help them really understand and grasp the overall value of making the investment. Early on, it was just it was just basically GPS tracking. Though. It was the dots on the map. Where is my vehicle today? It's a lot more of an integrated solution, where the GPS data is a portion of it, but we're seeing other technology coupled with that, such as accelerometers, which uh, indicate harsh braking, rapid acceleration, harsh turns. And with that type of information, we can develop driver profiles to help us score the drivers on their driving behaviors. Uh, with that driving behavior information, we can really kind of predict who's going to uh, Who's going to have an accident? You can see who you, uh, you can see where your liability is in certain driving behavior, so you correct the behavior before the accident occurs. Uh, a single accident can cost a company, you know, half million dollars or more if they're at fault. So uh, that, and then also taking the GPS data and moving the GPS data into other systems. Uh, if you're on site at a customer's location for two hours and your accounting system allows you to bill by the hour then you know maybe you can automate that billing process based on actual data and not have to count on the driver to write something down and log their time it also becomes information that you can provide back to the customers to you know to validate the work that you've done gps tracking is available to everybody today i mean there's lots of companies out there the uh the resources they provide the value they add to the equation varies greatly You've got very inexpensive companies that are basically web-based online companies, don't do tech support. If you're going to get trained, you're going to watch a video. Uh, and then you have full-service companies, which are on the high end, that do a lot of technology integration, that maybe have some uh, more advanced technology that they work with, and then everybody else falls somewhere in between. And uh, companies of any size, if you have two trucks, you can use GPS tracking because the data is helping you understand your business. And I tell people, you know, if you have two trucks, it's even more important that you track your fleet than if you have 100 trucks. If you have one truck and you have two trucks in your total fleet, if you have one truck that isn't producing, 50% of your workforce is unproductive. If you have one truck out of 100, it's only 1%. You're not even going to recognize that that truck is not productive. So the smaller your business, the more sensitive you are to productivity and revenue generation, uh, lawsuits, uh, accident claims, and things of that nature, that's why it's so much more important for the small fleets to be tracking everything that their vehicles are doing and stay on top of uh, those liability type issues. Companies that are running 24-7, you know, they have technicians that, that are in remote locations, they don't come into the office, maybe they make double time. Uh, a good example is an elevator service. 
you know, those companies run 24 seven. And if they have an elevator go down in a major building at one o'clock in the morning, somebody's dispatched. That technician's gonna be paid double time for being there. But if the call comes in at one, he gets out of bed at two, he goes on site, he's on site till four, he falls back asleep at six. Typically what you might see is, hey, I was working from one to six, getting paid double time at $35 an hour. When reality is, you can see what time the truck left and what time the truck got back to his house, and you can use that information for accurately billing or accurately paying for the overtime associated with that particular job and the billing that goes to the customer for the work that was actually done. So co companies that operate nonstop are really the ones that have a very, very short return on investment. Almost every asset today is tracked. If it has value, somebody wants to steal it. Uh, somebody wants to make sure that it's productive. So we track everything from rail cars to cargo containers to barges to uh, portable generators to empty trailers to trucks to cars. Doesn't matter. Almost everything that has value is being tracked these days. And it's for inventory control and it's for really for productivity and sometimes it's for customer service. At the onset, we're delivering data and that data has to be turned into some kind of actionable business intelligence. Right, so when we provide data about driving behavior, somebody has to take that, a manager has to take that information, and they have to make business decisions based on that information. Uh, data by itself is just data. I mean, and if we can't put that data into a meaningful, easy to access, easy to understand format, then people by nature will avoid things that are difficult. So, um, you know, the data has matured over time and has gone from being line items in a spreadsheet to summary information that builds a profile about particular areas of a, bin, of a business that are of interest to a typical fleet manager or an operations manager. It's not just about fleet. A lot of uh, organizations think that, well, it's, you know, this is a fleet manager responsibility. It's not. It's really an operations tool. But every aspect of the organization from administration to legal and everybody in between can gain valuable insight uh, you know, based on the data that's coming out of, out of the fleet operations from the GPS tracking system. If you think about uh, a small service company and the, the investment that it takes to hire a new, let's say, HVAC technician, you might spend a couple weeks getting them trained. Uh, they're not generating any revenue. They can only do low-value jobs for you. Uh, you might have 90 days into somebody before they actually become productive. At that point, it's you know ten, fifteen thousand dollars invested in this individual person, not including the cost of the school if you actually have to send them out to a school. So that person may have come to your company thinking, you know, I'm not nobody's going to know what I'm doing. I'm going to be out in the field on my own. I'm going to run my own little HVAC side business. I'm going to you know my truck goes home with me at night. So you know I'll do after hours work. Uh, using my company truck and my company tools, maybe some supplies and things like that. And the, the owner wouldn't have any idea until maybe six months down the road, they kind of figure out, you know, inventory doesn't match the orders. Uh, with the GPS tracking, you can actually interview people and communicate to them, hey, if you come on board, I just want you to know, you know, GPS tracking is a part of what we do and the tools that we use in order to be an efficient organization. Once the data is processed and is formed in, into something useful, that data can be used to mitigate risk. Uh, for example, reducing uh, accidents. If you know that your company has 2.7 accidents that cost you $50,000 for every million, uh, million miles driven, and you can change that number to, let's say, one accident every million miles driven because the data is profiling your drivers and identifying those that are risky, you now have actionable information. Uh, you know, I like to tell managers that data doesn't replace management and it doesn't replace leadership, most importantly. We forget the leadership portion of running a business. And if you try to run a business strictly off the data, you know, it's not going to work because people are people. And people are always the wild card in every business. And people behave differently and they respond differently to different uh, scenarios. So just looking at the data isn't necessarily gonna get you the end result that you want. You've gotta take that data, apply leadership, knowledge, wisdom, experience, and use it to, you know, to manipulate the situation to get the end result that you're looking for. There's lots of great stories that we get you know, from customers, whether it be they were able to recover a stolen vehicle. Uh, we had somebody here in town that had a trailer stolen. 
Uh, it was right before, right after one of the hurricanes that had come through, so he was swamped. Somebody broke into his lot and took his trailer and all of his all of his tools that he used to make money. And uh, you know, with the tracking system, they were actually able to run the vehicle down within a very short period of time. We're talking like later that day, and they were able to recover the trailer and all the mowers and the chainsaws and everything else that was stored inside that trailer, as well as the truck that was used to take the trailer. Um, we had a, a, probably the most dramatic example here in town was also from an electrical company where they hadn't actually even installed the GPS yet. They were simply, uh, they had simply announced the fact that they were going to implement GPS tracking and in that meeting they actually had two employees that, that stood up and quit. And this hardly ever happens, you know, this isn't like, you know, half your workforce is going to walk out, but in this example, these two people represented $10,000 a month in overtime. And they were obviously milking the system. They knew the gig was up. So they said, hey, look, I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm not going to put up with GPS tracking. And they up and left. Well, they found out that they didn't need to pay that overtime. They never replaced the guys. They sold the trucks, and they spread load their work amongst the other vehicles that they had. So the ROI was immediate, and it was very, very significant. That one savings alone probably paid for their system for the first three years. So, uh, you know, that's just one example. We're seeing a lot of companies now that are getting insurance discounts. You don't necessarily get a discount just because you put the technology on your, on your fleet, but if you can show your insurance company that you're taking steps to uh, improve the overall driving behavior, then they recognize that this is mitigating their risk as well. And, you know, an 8% uh, insurance reduction is not unheard of at all. And, uh, you know, fuel's an easy one, reducing engine idle time, slowing your trucks down, making sure that your trucks aren't being driven after hours, all of those types of things uh, are stories that we hear uh, from our customers. Uh, another good example, uh, a, a truck down in Fort Myers uh, where the vehicle was going home with the driver at night and uh, I got on and looked at the customer's information on, you know, on a Sunday and I noticed that the vehicle was driving from Fort Myers to Miami on a Sunday. So I went back and did a little bit more digging and found out that this particular employee liked to play golf in Miami and it was about a two hour ride for them and they were taking the company truck with all the wear and tear it puts on the vehicle and the liability and using company fuel to drive to Miami and back and who knows what he was doing if he was over there drinking playing golf having a good time if that vehicle had been into an accident with the logo on the side of the truck I mean the liability would have been through the roof so there's lots of examples of different ways to use the information as, as people look at their business and each one of them decides what's most important to them. And they focus in on that particular data and then they try to make business decisions using data to support their, their implementation process or their, their change management process. Yeah, it's, it's a common concern for business owners, especially small business owners, to be concerned about the big brother uh, aspect of the technology. Uh, I don't shy away from that. You know, part of this is big brother. It is another tool in a manager's tool belt to help them run their business. It's no different than using a service ticket. It's no different than auditing your accounting and your bookkeeping. It's no different than uh, everything that you do to follow up on what an employee does throughout the course of the day. This is one tool that helps you make a better decision. It's just another form of data coming at you. So you can't shy away from that. Uh, I think if you hit it head on, uh, if you can find some positive ways of presenting the information uh, and focus on the positives, you'll automatically address the negative behaviors. Uh, one of the things that also comes with people that are thinking about this is sometimes they say, hey, I want to do a covert install. I don't want my people to know it's there. We always highly recommend that you do not do covert installs. You really start to widen the gap between employee and management when you start to do things without somebody else's knowledge. Um, you know, If you tell them what it is, you don't have to show them or tell them about all the details that it, that it provides, but you tell them that it's there, that you're making a, an investment in the technology because it's going to do this, this, and this, one of those things is we can see what you're doing to make sure that you're getting there on time. If you're not there on time or if a customer calls and says, hey, your guy was late, you know what, now I can pull up the report and I can tell the customer, well, you know, Mr. Customer, he was there at 3 o'clock and I can send you the GPS report that shows you that. So uh, there is a positive aspect of this to, the, to, uh, to your employees. The best employees typically appreciate it because they're the ones that are always making up the slack for the guys that aren't doing so well. The technology should provide you about 150 to 200 percent ROI for every dime that you spend on on the technology itself. Eighty dollars a month in uh, return on investment is roughly two and a half dollars a day. 
almost anybody could find a two and a half dollar savings uh, per vehicle per day, whether it be through f uh, fuel management, whether it be through an increase in productivity, uh, maybe a more accurate time card. All of these things are, are little opportunities to improve the value that the technology has. And uh, even in the worst case scenario, most of our customers get their uh, return on investment in less than 90 days. And that's a total return on investment. That's anything they invest in hardware, installation, and service for the first 12 months. So it's a very short ROI period. And I often ask customers, when's the last time you bought a computer? You know, all right, so most people buy computers on a regular basis. And what'd you pay for that computer? Somewhere between $500 and $1,500. And I ask them, what's your return on investment on your computer? And they don't know. They can't put a number on it. Well, we can actually help you watch uh, your P&L change in these different areas once you implement and start taking action on the data that's coming from the system.